All right, so here we're supposed to determine the intervals on which the graph of the function is concave upward and the interval on which the is concave downward, and then we sketch a graph of each function. So now some of these, it's best if we just kind of look and say, okay, well, let's plot these, see what it looks like, and then we can kind of determine where it's concave up, concave down, and 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 so on from, from the actual graph. So let's go to a graph, and let's do our first one. The first one was we had a negative e and it was to the negative x, okay? So now let's look at the graph. I don't know if they have an interval. Okay, the interval looks good. Uh, and so it looks like, you know, we're concave downwards. And if we would zoom out here, you know, if we're going uh, further out each way, we could go from negative 30 to 30 by 10 maybe, and negative 30 to, oops, to 30 by again 10 and again it doesn't matter we're still doing the same thing and that's what we would expect for the graph of e to the x and with our negative e to the negative x but that would be what we expect so basically from negative infinity to positive infinity is going to be concave downward okay and so what we could do is we could do a, a quick sketch for a and it would look something like this it's gonna and we have kind of a bad graph there but it would look something like that and so it's gonna be concave down and it's going from negative infinity to infinity because this is just going to keep going that way and that's going to keep going that way and so it's always going to be concave down all right so b then we have the ln of 1 over x okay well we know what ln of x looks like so what's the ln of 1 over x well let's go over here and type it in so now we're going to do the ln of 1 divided by x. And what does that look like? Well, that one looks like this. Now, if we go really close here, what happens is that gets really close to 0, but it never gets there. So let's go from minus 2. And it's, what happens is it's going to just go up to positive infinity at that point. And so what does that look like? Well, it's going to be something like this okay well this is concave up right so we have concave up and it's not going to be at zero but it's going to you know be around zero and it's going to go all the way to infinity and it's not going to change this is going to just keep going up and up and getting closer to zero but not reaching it hence our parenthesis here and not being equal to zero okay now what about our x to the one third all right well, if we go in here and we type in and get rid of that, we have x to the 1 divided by 3. Now, we probably better put our window back out. Let's go minus 10 to 10. Uh, let's go by 5. I don't know what we need, but let's start with that and see what we see. All right, so maybe we let's go up and down on y's a little bit. So let's go maybe minus, I don't know, 10 to 10 to bring it in a little bit. And so it looks like what happens is it's going up, and then we have this point of inflection, and then it's going the other way. So here, we're concave up, and here, we're concave down. So that looks like zero is going to be our switching point. It's going to be where we have a point of inflection. And so if I can find my marker here, we're having something. It kind of comes up here. And then it switches over and does something like that. And so we're going to be concave up from negative infinity up to zero. And we're going to be concave down from zero to positive infinity. So we're having that point here where we switch up and then down. Okay. So let's stop there and we'll come back for more again. That is going to be our point of inflection. And so we'll talk about that here in a second.